All right, range day. Now, all we know is just to go fire farm the brass, but it's range day. Always fun on range day, right? Here's the target. First shot was like right there, somewhere just above the line there. Second shot was the one just above the bullseye. Next, next 23 was all over this. So, not too bad. Okay, so I went to a range today. It's a public range. Been there before. It wasn't the range I wanted to go to today. <clears throat> I felt. I got up this morning, didn't feel too good. Got up late, actually. So, I wasn't going to go at all. And finally, I started feeling better. And I go, I'm going to run down. It's a range that's not too far from me. <clears throat> Instead of going to the other range, which was going to be a good, good long drive. And I was going to shoot other guns, too. But I wanted to get these fire forms so we can get going. Uh... With the rest of the project here anyway there's range let's say it's not reloader friendly range you get when you get there let's say that you get there 10 minutes after the hour it's getting a little breezy out here it's trying to rain you get it say you get there 10 minutes after the hour <clears throat> and somebody has shot on a target at the lane you're on well that target's there until they change targets they don't allow you to go down range they call ceasefire they have a ceasefire every hour so you get maybe 45 minutes to 50 minutes of shooting time and then they call ceasefire for about 10 minutes you want a new target put up they'll go put a new target up for you <clears throat> or whatever so it's not a real uh, reloader friendly range but anyway we got there just as they was changing target so I got a happened to get a fresh target but I shot about three rounds into it and looked at it again. It's like, where in the heck do those two holes come from? You can tell they're 22s. <clears throat> Thing was, is to my left, maybe four empty benches. And on my right, there was an empty bench and then there was three more benches. So somebody shot at my target. Anyway. <clears throat> Everything went pretty good. I'm not happy with Trail Boss. I've kind of noticed it in my 32. Uh, even though if I weigh out of what charges, I could tell it some of my pistols, because that's all I ever loaded into it until I loaded this. The, uh, this rifle I could tell from shot to shot, each shot felt a little different. You, you just tell the power level to look exactly the same. And it kind of, I think that's why it shows that stringing up and down. So <clears throat> we're going to try some different powders. Uh, only other thing I had problem with was, and I've never had this before, You see how long that throw is on that firing pin on this thing? On about shot 20, somewhere around there, when I pulled the trigger, all I heard was click. And I'm not for sure what happened. <clears throat> but I looked down. I was holding the gun forward, waiting on it. And I looked down, and obviously you can see here on, a, uh, on the 303, you can manually cock this thing and that's where it was it was that's half cock so it evidently caught caught in half cock somewhere 
so we will be disassembling the bolt double checking everything in there checking all the trigger mechanism before we go any further but all in all good day at the range so uh, like I said I want to try some different powders y'all got any suggestions leave them in the comments make sure before you even comment if it ain't filling a case half full I ain't using it just I ain't using it I, don't, I just don't like half full cases got too many too many chances I know double double charging is very unlikely because I will be weighing each and every one of these because this is I'm not loading thousands of rounds I'm not gonna do a, a progressive or anything like that I'm just gonna load probably 20 at a time or so 25 and I'll weigh each one uh, the other thing too was scope this old Bushnell sports view parallax on it 50 yards is fuzzy I looked out there at the 100 yard line it was it was kind of pretty clear it wasn't perfect but for a cheap scope but it 50 yard parallax sucked so I'm going to be changing this scope out I got some uh, I got a couple air rifles that I'm not hardly using and I got a couple good scopes on it. I may swap, steal one of those off of it, put it on here, where I can have a Parallax adjustable scope. And uh, all right, uh, we'll go inside now. Well, first, uh, at this point, I'm gonna run some uh, range footage, and then I'll go in it, sit down at the bench, and we're gonna measure the uh, datum line on these things. All right. All right, obviously, trail boss, no pressure signs whatsoever. All right. Okay. 
844. Well, that's 12 thou over the datum line. Uh, let's check another one. Let's check about three of them. 844. the box 844 so we're consistent on the data line let me get my notes here where I got it at right here. data line on this was supposed to be 832 minus 15 so it tells you that as an amateur machinist 20 years old didn't know what I was doing other than reading books because there was no internet back then did the best I could I obviously reamed the chamber in a little too deep <clears throat> so but we got fire form brass I don't know how much it's stretched and how much it'll keep stretching but just bumping it back it shouldn't stretch too much more so anyway that's what we got and that's what we're going with don't forget to leave suggestions on powders like I said if it ain't a half a case or more don't bother with it so all right thanks for watching